Hi, really quick before we get into the actual video, just want to say, hope you're doing well. When you're walking through the stores, it really doesn't matter whether you're paying a lot or paying a little bit. It's about the certifications and what your oils are rated for. So I know it can be a little daunting when you go through the aisle and everything is kind of confusing, but you're looking for a few things. You're looking for, one, that rating right there, or that little, apparently it's called a starburst. I was just calling it a ribbon, but it says for gasoline engines, API certified. And you're looking for where it says ILSAC right there. Those two bodies are in charge of talking, back up a little bit. Those two bodies are in charge of rating and certifying oils to make sure, and lubricants to make sure they're up to a certain code. What the heck are the API and ILSAC? So right on the front of your bottle usually, it'll say API or American Petroleum Institute. If it has that ribbon, you know you're good. So the API and ILSAC work together, the ILSAC, that's right over here. That stands for the International Lubricant Specification Advisory Committee. And they work together to make sure the stuff that you're putting into your engine is not trash. Just to make this super quick, on the Castrol, we have the GF5 rating, which is the standard before the now current GF6. Now GF6 does come in 6A and 6B, and this isn't a video about ratings because if you look on the front, they are both rated for gasoline engines, so there's no question about that, no issues there. However, it will tell you how many certifications it has and what standards they meet, so check accordingly. They are both 5W30 and we are using the GTX high mileage, so we have our rating here. Same thing goes over here, rated for 20,000 miles. Now, if we do a little bit of quick math, it says 250,000 for 10 years. If we divide that 250,000 by 10, we get 25,000 miles. So the Castrol is rated for 25,000. The mobile one is for 20,000. Now that doesn't mean that this one's better. What it means is 25,000 miles before you need an oil change. Now, most people are not gonna be burning through 25,000 miles in a year. So if you have a full synthetic like this, you're good for about 12 months. If you're using something like this, be very careful. This is a synthetic blend, meaning it may use high quality conventional oil mixed with a synthetic formula. However, I would stop this after about eight months. I'd probably change it. This one's good for 12. If you're using conventional oil, which is super cheap, I wouldn't recommend that for anybody. But if you're gonna be going for that, I wouldn't keep that in your car longer than six months. So. Everything's good here. And for those of you who are not currently using binoculars and don't wanna sit here watching this zoomed in thing for 10 hours, basically, if you look on the back of both, they simulate the same thing. They're both advertising clean engine. After one oil change, you get rid of sludge. In this tiny text up here, it says, fights buildup of sludge. If you look over here, it says better high performance. Over here, it talks about oil burn off. Again, they talk about thermal protection and they both claim ultimate engine performance. And if you look really close over here, it talks about superior engine protection with GDIs and minimizing engine wear and improving fuel economy. So at the end of the day, every company is gonna say, ours is the cleanest, ours is the best, ours is the most affordable, you know, all that good stuff. But at the end of the day, the proof is in the pudding. What can you afford as well as what can it do? With full synthetic blends, they typically are more resistant to heat. And because this is the GF6, try to get the ZF6 if you can. The GF6A versus B, those are a different question. I would still go with the A over B, but GF6A are com backwards compatible with GF5. So if you happen to mix these, for example, let's say you didn't have enough of this and you threw a little bit of this in, that's okay. However, if you have an oil that has GF, 6B rating, then you don't want to go, it's not backwards compatible. So let's pour them up and see what's going on. Now this isn't really an apples to apples comparison. This is full synthetic, synthetic blend over here. So if, as of making this video, if you happen to see this, I would personally go for the Castrol Edge. It's a full synthetic and it will help better with thermal protection and friction over the standard GTX. Again, get what you can afford, sure, if they have all the, the right ratings, but 
this is as close to what I have on hand, so keep that in mind. And I will leave a sheet showing what different certifications this one has through the information given versus this one here. Sound good? Just so we can keep everybody on the same page and you're not sitting here combing through the video. Let's make this fast so they're not wasting your time or mine. Today at the request of a commenter, right over here, we're gonna be comparing Mobile One to something else. Now, they did ask for multiple, but this is just all I had on hand and I didn't feel like buying half of Walmart's oil section just to compare a bit of oil. Also, if you wanna see some actual real world engine wear type of situations, you can look up Project Farm. He is a godfather to the YouTube channel and he does very good testing as far as being no nonsense and keeping his opinions 100% based off of the findings and not on people sending him money. So there's that. But what I'm gonna be doing, that I'm gonna be pouring them measured in with these measuring cups just to make sure they're the same amount, see what their speed is when pouring and then leaving them for 24 hours in a freezer to see what their cold performance is because in my neck of the woods, yesterday was about 17 degrees. Sometimes it drops down lower during the winter. And so we need to see what these are doing, especially during the winter. So let's get into it. Let's do it. Now, at the end of the day, I'm not trying to sell you anything. If any of the oils that you see meet the right specifications, that means all of these that are here, then it's gonna get the job done. However, different additives are based off of what you want. Are you trying to clean your engine more? Do you need to protect more from friction? Whichever one has more of those additives is what you're gonna be doing. So do not put all your eggs in one basket. Just know that you need to look for something different and something that's compatible. Sound good? We're gonna pour these up and they're gonna go in the freezer. 24 hours later, we'll see which one pours easier, and in theory, that will be what moves better during lubrication, especially during the cold. Okay, in they go. Castrol on the left. Mobile one on the right. I will see you two in 24 hours. One day later. Quick little side note, I am using my temperature probe for my Klein multimeter. We're getting between zero and three degrees as far as the coldest. Okay, we are officially 24 hours later. I'm gonna slap on these gloves because I'm gonna pull it straight out of the freezer without transferring any of my body heat so that there's no, A, hey, you was cooking that with your other hand and no nonsense like that. So it's gonna go right here. Give me one second. It's coming out, Castrol is gonna be on the left, right here. And we have our mobile one on the right. Okay, so the first things first, they both maintain their color, of course. Little bit of frost over the top, that's normal since they are in open containers. But synthetic or full synthetic is much more loose. And the reason for that is it's a much better uh, formula when it comes to colder environments as you can see this one's a lot more like molasses or uh, chainsaw oil you can see it's still holding its its oil properties but it's much looser this one's almost like honey I'm gonna try to do a side by side if I can zoom in on that <laughs> the uh, the consistency between the two is more noticeable in person. So this one's more like honey. This one's more like a, like a thicker molasses. So if you happen to live like myself in a place where your winters can get down to single digits or very low double digits, or if you live, you know, in the middle of Tennessee or Texas or a place where it's not as bad, you know, synthetic blends, okay. Me personally, I will always vouch for Full synthetic no matter where you go but again everybody take it with a grain of salt that's just me but yes even just the mobility each of these is a half a quart they have not lost any 
mass since then, but you can definitely see that when you're starting your engine during a cold day, you're gonna be seeing a lot of this taking its time to get to the top of your engine, whereas full synthetic within a couple of seconds is already gonna be right where the engine oil needs to be to keep those components safe. That's why I will always vouch for full synthetic. So at the end of the day, if you have the option, go for full synthetic, even if you don't need it and it's a brand new car, no. Stay away from the conventional stuff. I'm just not a fan. That's my word, take it with a grain of salt. The synthetic blends as a last resort and they have nothing else, but if you have the option, always full synthetic. Castrol has full synthetic stuff, so this isn't a mobile one over Castrol thing. This is a synthetic over any other crap that they're selling out there. Make sure they have the right certifications and the right additives, and above all else, make sure that you are changing your oil every three to 5,000 miles. Do not wait for the 20,000 or 25,000, however many thousand miles that they say it's okay for. It will do it. That doesn't mean you should let your car go through it. As the heat starts to cook up your oil, you lose the potency, and you will no longer have the protection that is advertised. So let's be clear about this. Every three to 5,000 miles, you change it. When you change it, change the filter as well. Some people say, I leave my filter in two, three changes because it's a wasted filter. No, that valve needs to be clean and full of no contaminants to make sure that it's completely going through for the next 12 months of you driving it. I don't care if it's a van, truck, motorcycle, helicopter, spaceship, change the filter, change the oil. That is my take. By all means, feel free to go watch 50 more videos and change your opinion with other people. That's my take. Three to 5,000, new filter. Make sure you're not buying the stuff that costs a dollar, two dollars because you get what you pay for. With that being said, the last thing I wanna debunk is dummies out there who use Mobile One. I'm a Mobile One user. People say you need to have the Mobile One filter when you're using this oil, otherwise it's not as good. That's nonsense. As long as you're not getting a dollar or two dollar filter from some Chinese website that you can't even pronounce or read and it pretty much snaps and falls off your car day one, you should be getting whatever's available. I'm not a fan of super tech, so if you happen to walk into a, a Walmart, I know, kind of keep walking. I like the Fram Ultra Synthetics. That's just what I go for. That's the third tier of the Fram filters. That's what I use. If you want to use K&N um, or, or any other filters, Purilator, I don't care right? You do whatever you want. You want to cut them open and see which one has a plastic valve and which one's got a metal one. Shop smarter and above all, work smart. See you in the next one.